Weird lag time. There we go. Um, hi, parents of students in contemporary world issues. My name is Mrs. Truex, and I am your kid's teacher. And so um, welcome to the strangest back to school night that I have ever been a part of. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit about contemporary world issues and um, what we do, how you can help. And I wanted to give you a little tour in our Google platform since that's the primary mode of communication these days. Um, so contemporary world issues is basically a geography class and we look at the world through a geographic lens and our goal is to study current events and analyze those events through the lens of geography. So um, basically we start from unit one where we um, teach the students about the spatial perspective and to ask the questions, what is where, why there and why care. Um, we have been practicing our map reading skills and we've already been analyzing phenomenon um, at various scales. And so um, it's a really cool, I think very important course for freshmen to take because this is the one opportunity that they have in high school to really learn about their world in a broader context and through a very contemporary lens. Um, so I kind of combined who we are and what we do. Um, we work on the inquiry model. So students are um, given an essential question at the beginning of every unit. And then uh, we use all of the learning in the unit to help us answer eventually the essential question. So it's kind of a fun course um, for students to dig deep into not just like the events like I talked about, but also their analytical and argumentation skills, because that's usually what we do at the end of every unit. There's a performance assessment where they have to demonstrate their learning um, in a way that's not just a regular old multiple choice pencil and paper test, which we can't really do right now anyway. So we got lucky in that regard. Um, how you can help. Um, one of the things that I think is really important to help students be successful in this course is to build their understanding of global events. So those dinner conversations that um, you are having about things that are happening in the world are going to be really important for this class because if I can increase their sort of spatial global awareness, then some of the concepts that we talk about will be easier for them to understand. So I guess just keep talking about what's going on um, in the world today. Now, um, like I said, Google Classroom is our one-stop shop for all of our learning these days in this odd remote learning environment. And I just wanted to talk to you about the classroom page and give you just a little bit of a tour. So if you ever have questions or concerns, or if you're looking at, um, I know that you don't see this, but you can ask your kids to show it to you. Um, but if you ever have concerns about like what you're seeing in home access, um, you could ask them to show you the Google Classroom page and then sort of like look through what the expectations are and I'll show you what I mean. So for example, right when you open the home page, um, you can tell that there's something due tomorrow. Most of the time I will give a due date if I know that an assignment that we're working on in class needs to be completed for homework. Um, and so you'll see that in the box right here. But the stream, this part here, is just for us to communicate as a class. So it's uh, messages that I might send to students, maybe a question of the day. It's kind of like our our hallway page, you know, our chit chatty page. But all the stuff that we're doing in class, you'll find under classwork. So um, for example, if you're looking here, like this is the unit one study guide. So there's always going to be some sort of unit one resources here. This is important resources for all of the weeks of study. So they don't really belong in any particular week. We are currently in week four. So what's always true about these weeks and how they're organized is that they always have the weekly agenda. And that's always followed by the weekly Google slide presentation. So um, when we're in synchronous session, so when we're meeting face to face, I will always have sort of an agenda, like, an, well, I'll just show you. So um, I have the weekly agenda. So you can see here what we're doing over the course of the week. And this is a live document. So um, I might change things. Um, so like I put it together, obviously, this past weekend. And then if things are like moving faster or slower, this could change. But in essence, this is kind of my goal, <laughs> what I hope we get accomplished. And so a lot of the things that we're actually doing in class are hyperlinked to this document. So if students, um, they don't finish something in class or they want to get ahead. So if there's like homework, which is always here in this asynchronous prep, you can see like if I want them to do something to prepare for the next class, this is where, where we will, they will find it. If it's a demonstration of learning or if it's like just something to finish up because we started in class, this is the section where you will find it. 
So um, here's that practice map and the practice maps are located. Um, I'll show you where they're located in just a minute. And then this is what we're doing tomorrow and then the following day. So it's kind of like the overview for the week. But then if you want more specific, so for today, for example, they can click on the assignment. So view assignment. And um, this is what we actually did today. So we discussed scale and of analysis. We answered the question, how does changing scale change our understanding of a topic? We practiced a little bit in class. And then this is what they have to complete for homework for tonight. And then they submit this through Google Classroom. So, um, and one last thing that I forgot to mention here on this is that students can see how they're being assessed as well. So like completing the map is something that I'm gonna give them feedback on and it goes into the grade book. Usually completion is just, did you do it? Did you not do it? Um, and it's a two one zero grade. Um, and then of course, this is another formative assessment that's gonna get feedback. And then summatives are always in yellow. And, um, and that is, maybe like probably the most important part of what you need to know that's on here. And then um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is that this is a, an odd year where there are no final exams. And so we're essentially uh, using the sort of 95-5. So any big assessment, and they don't have to be end of unit assessment, but anytime students are being assessed after we've done practice, that would go into the summative category. And that's worth 95 percent of their grade and anytime you see that blue it's just kind of like a formative assessment where I'm giving feedback that would be um, five percent of their, their grade so I encourage you to please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or concerns and I miss the face-to-face -face interaction but um, I'm loving this platform um, because this is what we have and you know like we're I guess doing the best that we can so um, I hope we get back to school soon and that's all I have. And now I can't get out. There we go. <laughs> Don't mind the technology.